There is a fifth dimension beyond that is known to no man. That dimension is Podcrashed. This podcast, we warn you, can be a bit of a train wreck. Your hosts, Anna and April, sit down with a different guest every week, and they talk about things like life, liberty, and all things random. We warn you that where you're about to go may be dangerous, but we hope you enjoy the show. Shut up, shut up, and sit down, 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 down. Way to start. Thanks, Tug. <laughs> I literally started recording. With the meow. <laughs> and then he meowed. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess we should say welcome. Welcome to Podcrash. Mm-hmm. We never introduce ourselves anymore. Well, I mean, there are only should two we? of us. They well, should know. Still. Well, I mean, I'm April. Anna. That's Anna. And they're not mic'd, but we have a impromptu audience uh-huh first time ever first time ever my mom consider this a live show a live show a live taping of pod crashed with my mom and my nephew john who they were super excited because we are going to be talking to another author today uh-huh auto throw Ooh. that's auto o-t-t-o mm-hmm. and he wrote the given hand <laughs> You read it, you don't know the title. I, I wanted to double check because I always get <laughs> things wrong. So, A Given Hand, A Messenger's Journey. Mm-hmm. And it's, uh, I read it, Anna hasn't. I should probably There's say There's only one copy. There's only one copy. You don't have to say it, I'll just pretend. Just pretend. <laughs> You'll ask him everything that he, like. So tell me about your life. That's yeah, what the book's about. Basically. Uh, it's about, he is a, uh, how do you say this without being jerky? A self-proclaimed medium? Okay. I guess. Yeah. Where, uh. I don't know if you can get certified as a medium. Is that a thing? Well, I mean, you it's get, like, like a paperwork if, that says. It's like other people tell you you're a medium. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I guess everyone's pretty much self-proclaimed mm. psychic or medium, but, uh, he is specifically a medium, so uh-huh. he can talk to and see dead people spirits spirits <laughs> dead people makes it sounds like it's the sixth sense and he sees ghosts in the corner and stuff mm-hmm. which i don't know maybe he does which but... i mean he pretty much does <laughs> oh, okay uh but bruce willis was dead the whole time mm-hmm. um the book is a um autobiography basically mm-hmm. of his um telling about his uh lifetime of dealing with and learning to develop and handle Mm -hmm. uh deal with his gift of being a medium of seeing right spirits talking to them Mm -hmm. uh and it's actually i should again i should say this to him because it's a compliment Mm -hmm. when we call him in a few minutes but it's really well written i really enjoyed it Mm -hmm. um because it's very rarely do you, do I find a book, specifically a autobiography, where the author sounds like, where it's written in a way that it seems like the pers- the author or the speaker is sitting there right there talking to you. Mm-hmm. And it was really neat, so it made it a lot more enjoyable. Okay. It wasn't like, oh, he was born on this day, and mm-hmm. this happened, and on this date in history, he did this. No, mm-hmm. it was... It's written as if he's sitting across the table telling you about his life. Okay. Like, oh, I remember this, and this happened. Mm-hmm. And it's really, really well done. Okay. It's also, well, it's co-written by Sonny Fader. Fader. That's a yeah. cool name. Mm-hmm. You should Fader. have a kid named him Darth. Darth? Darth. <laughs> um, okay. That's really cool. I'm recalling him. In two minutes. And specifically two but, So minutes. I don't embarrass myself. Does he tell about the first time he... Like, experienced? Yes. And how young was he? Uh, Because you said he's been doing this his whole life, kind um, of. I think it said he was about probably four or five. Okay, so like his whole life. Yeah, it's been his entire life. And 
uh, his grandmother uh-huh. was also a very um, good like medium oh, as well. Okay, and so she taught him and helped him uh, develop his gift and uh-huh. whatnot. Where his mother, I mean, everyone in the family knew about the gift mm-hmm. and whatnot, his ability, and his mother was more intuitive. Did he where talk- she would just get like feelings. Yeah, she wasn't completely like a medium and could see dead people keep seeing dead people <laughs> forgive me i'm working on no sleep for 24 hours so why would you do that <laughs> because i had to work last night anna well why'd you schedule the phone call for 10 a.m <laughs> because i forgot i had to work today <laughs> last night <laughs> okay all right i had well no i shouldn't i had a quick maybe half an hour nap power nap you'll uh, you'll be good We'll work Don't it. crash after the phone call ends. Yeah. Luckily, I'm not driving, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it is now 10 o'clock a.m. Okay. Time to call Mr. Otto as mom bounces giddily in her chair. Hey. <laughs> Hopefully this is still working. Why is it working now? We had no problems with the first phone call. I think that's probably not a oh, good omen. There we go. Since we're talking about spirituality. <laughs> it's not a good omen. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Hello. Hey, Otto, it's April. Hi, April. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Good. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview with us. You're very welcome. Um, uh, I'd like Anna's with me here. Hello, and it's nice to talk to you. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? <laughs> I'm great, thanks. Good. Um, so, uh, yeah, I have to should say right up front there, uh, I was able to read your book. Anna wasn't able to read it. Um, but I I have to give your, I think uh, Sunny wrote, wrote it, right? Sunny Fader? Co-wrote it. Co-wrote it with you? Uh, she, she co-wrote it with me, and then she got ill and passed on. Oh. oh I'm so sorry to hear. Um, yeah, she's a great woman. Did you were you, did you know her, or was she somebody you met through the process of writing the yes, book? Yes, actually, I met her. She came into the salon where I worked, mm-hmm. and we just just had a feeling that it was going to work, and we started talking. She was telling me that she was a writer, and she was talking to me about thinking I had something to say, and mm-hmm. she encouraged me to write this book. So that's when we started to. Uh, work on it together. I worked on it for about two years with her, mm-hmm. and then she passed out, so I had to finish it. Oh, no, so oh. she didn't get to see it published or anything? No, mm. no. We were about uh, six chapters away from it being published, but she knew mm-hmm. it would it would mm-hmm. work. Oh. Uh, I, yeah, I have to say, it is the most amazing autobiography I've ever read, just because it while I was reading it, it seemed like you were sitting across the table talking to me and just telling me about your life. Thank you very much. I get that a lot with people. It's it's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's... Really... I did that, you know, I did that kind of purposely. If you noticed that it was uh, two-spaced. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In between the sentences, I did that for pause because I wanted people to ingest what they just read. Mm-hmm. And I was a group of people yesterday that we were talking about my book and they said because of that they were able to really get into the book more it gave them a line of thought and that's exactly what I was trying to achieve mm-hmm. I think that's definitely true yeah I I definitely found myself more in uh more involved in the book or everything didn't feel as removed from yeah. it yeah even though you can't necessarily relate to specific things in, in your life because it is, you know, somebody else's life, but being able to pull someone in to relate to things that they don't necessarily have firsthand experience at is really um, impressive as a writer to be able mm-hmm. to do that. Thank you. And this is my first attempt. And uh, I'm, I'm very proud of it because I've had a lot of servicemen coming up to me and mm-hmm. ask me about it and telling me that it has helped him, help them with closure, knowing what happened and what actually does happen those who are fighting right next to you Mm -hmm. and at their time of demise it's just so debilitating because you don't know if you can go on but Mm -hmm. this has given them courage 
that they don't need all the meds and everything, that they can mm-hmm. get through it knowing that there is a closure. Mm-hmm. Definitely, yeah. Um, yeah, that was another thing that struck me where usually you don't hear about too many um, veterans who served in Vietnam talking about their experiences, so it was really eye-opening just to read everything that um, that you had gone through over there. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you. Yeah, that was one of the biggest encouragements with Sunny is she she just kept, you know, throttling me. You've got to talk about this. It's all inside you. Someone's got to talk about this. And mm-hmm. one day I just woke up and said, I'm going to do it. And mm-hmm. it was a rather arduous thing to do, but yeah. I'm very proud of the fact that I did. Uh, I don't, I guess... Jeez, I, it's hard to ask you about the book, or because it's, it's like well, I know your whole obvious, life. <laughs> obviously, everybody who's listening to this hasn't necessarily read the book, so yes. maybe you should ask them things that are in the book, just a couple things so that people can kind of get a taste of what's in store when they read the book. Okay. Um, well, Even if you know the answers. Even though I know the answers. I guess, <laughs> so Anna and our... Okay, there, there's the question. I got it from Anna. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. The book is about a young child that was born with a gift and it became aware, or mm-hmm. he became aware, at the age of five years old, encouraged by his grandmother and his mother. Mm-hmm. Basically his grandmother, because she was born with the gift itself. Mm-hmm of being a medium and it carried on through my high school then into the service from the service there on afterwards and uh, it's an eye-awakening experience being a child and just learning this on a daily basis Mm -hmm. as now I still learn every single day of things that happen with people Mm -hmm. and it's I use this towards my readings when I'm helping them Mm mm-hmm do you kind of uh, credit your grandmother for uh, kind of harnessing your gift and teaching you about it rather than maybe somebody who has this ability who didn't grow up in a family where they were aware that it was something people had that kind of might oh, have I not realized? my grandmother because at mm-hmm. that given time, at that age, back at that time, it would have been considered that the child had schizophrenia and right. normally that was the case and they would put mm. put you in a home yeah mm-hmm. and you never knew but my grandmother embraced it and taught me mm-hmm. and then when everything started happening in the book which i'm going not going to open up about <laughs> leave some <laughs> yeah, of it a secret yeah. It. <laughs> yeah. uh, it, it helped me to go on today to to help mm-hmm. people which i do on a daily basis yeah so um, I, I, I bring them closure to their to their their lost loved ones. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Um, so forgive me because they sent us one copy. So April was the one that read it. So I apologize if I t- touch on something that you cover in the book very extensively. But um, so you said you you work at a salon. So when you do you do like do you just kind of meet people and and it kind of naturally comes out that you have this ability and then you can I help usually them get or... a message prior to a person coming to me uh-huh. even working in the salon mm-hmm. such as with honey i had a message and i had no idea who who it was for okay and then when she walked into the salon i knew exactly that that was the person and yes to answer that question mm-hmm. that message comes to me prior to me meeting that person okay so you get it but you don't know what it means until you sync it up to the person when you come to contact with i get the message but i can't i can't put the puzzle together Uh until that missing piece walks up to me yeah it's usually within a day or so oh okay so Uh, it's not like you get a message you get like a feeling and then months months later it's usually within the few days oh no no it's usually immediately okay longest i think it's ever been is three or four days oh okay Um, I guess, like, how, if I, how, how often do you get messages? I mean, like, do you get, like, ten messages? <laughs> it's like an answering machine. It's like an answering well, machine. Really, like... It's really amazing that you asked me that, because I was out with friends yesterday, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden, my two friends who are very aware, the husband said to me, you're looking around and you're smiling. He mm-hmm. said, what do you see? And I saw messages I saw people. I saw people next to people that Mm -hmm. were passed on. Mm -hmm. I saw their relatives, their friends that departed. And I said, this room is is so overcrowded right now. I said, but there are some people that messages need to be delivered to. Mm -hmm. And I walked up uh, to a woman and I just asked her, do you believe in spirits? Yes, I do. And I said, well, I have a message for you. Mm 
mm-hmm. and it was from her sister who passed on just two months ago. Mm. Wow. Do you ever when it you gave her absolute closure yeah. yesterday? Wow. Do you ever like when you approach someone? Do they ever? Do you get a negative response from them? People who don't necessarily believe in the ability oh, yeah. and yeah. how do you kind of combat yeah. that and to... i don't i don't encourage them you know <laughs> right i just ask them i always ask permission uh-huh mm-hmm. before i do anything but yes i have run into those who do not believe mm-hmm. but somehow if they claim that they don't believe before they walk away from me they'll say well what was it you needed to tell me because mm-hmm. they're still so curious after yeah. i tell them i'll go ahead and tell them but I'll ask full permission. You mm-hmm. know, this may not be what you want to hear or what you thought you would hear. Mm-hmm. After I deliver the message, they want more. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, I guess how do you, is it just a feeling that you get? Like, how do you choose which messages to deliver, I guess? I, I do get a feeling. I also hear the voice of the person that's departed. Mm. And when I see the other person that the message is to be be delivered to at that given point i see the person that's delivering the message to me Mm -hmm. it's almost like a hologram if you will Mm -hmm. okay so i can i I can get a vision of them but i also can see a material size side of them Mm -hmm. is it it like a really clear version of what the person looked like or is it just kind of maybe a haze or it, it is. It just depends on uh, the reception that I get. Mm-hmm. And it's it's really strange. The more electricity that's around, mm-hmm. such as, you know, all the cell phones, your electricity. Christmas is a wonderful time with all the lights and mm-hmm. what have you because they are <laughs> charged by this energy. Yeah. Because that's all it is, is energy. And the more energy that they can pull into themselves, mm-hmm. the clearer they make their own picture. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I know that you don't touch on this in your book, but have you ever had anyone come up to you and like ask you for help? Like if they have a gift and they want to develop it or they need help with it? Actually, yes. Uh, I have several friends who feel that they have a gift and they... Uh, there's a woman that I work with, matter of fact, and she will come up and she says, I have this feeling. Can you help me define it? And she will tell me what it is. And it's a vision that she's seeing. Oh. It's, it's words that she hears. Mm-hmm. She just doesn't know how to develop it. So I told her, you have to go within yourself first and believe in yourself because that's, you're the portal. Mm-hmm. And if you can make peace and clarity within your, yourself, these words, these visions will, will come forth to you and be so clear that you have no problem just spewing it out. And she's, she's been working on this and it works wonders for her. Okay. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like any sort of, um, kind of like, like taking on like a sport or an activity where the more you work on it and train yourself, I guess the better you get that's at exactly it or right that okay. is exactly right and i and that's one of the things that i'm trying to do is to let people truly be aware that it's not only myself that has this gift mm-hmm. we all have this gift it's just that we've all been sidetracked by technology by other things and mm-hmm. and growing up things our parents told us not to do religion will tell us to do one thing and to believe in another but you have to go within yourself mm-hmm. right so you, that's when I've become more spiritual than I have with religion. Okay. So you think it's something that everyone possesses. It's just a matter of whether they choose Everybody to. Everybody does possess it. Okay. Especially children <laughs> because of the innocence that they have. Yeah. Uh, well, you do hear a lot of stuff if when. You see children, if you see children on a toy phone mm-hmm. or a, ch- a child talking to somebody that's imaginary, mm-hmm. that nine times out of ten, that is not an imaginary person. That child sees who they're talking to. Okay. Wow. You do hear a lot that, um, yeah, that ch- children and, and they say animals too have a better sense of that kind of Absolutely, because thing. of purity. Yeah. They have, they have not had their minds cluttered uh-huh. with what we tell them they can and cannot believe. Okay. I just experienced this uh, about two weeks ago. A gentleman came to me and told me that he thought something was wrong with his daughter. They were going to take her to a psychiatrist Mm -hmm. because they thought she was schizophrenic. She Mm -hmm. was just talking on the phone constantly. Mm -hmm. 
to her grandfather. And I said, have you ever asked her? Yes, she's told me I'm talking to my grandfather. I said, have you ever picked up the phone? He said, no. I said, next time pick up the phone. Wow. So he was playing along with his daughter. Mm -hmm. Who are you talking to? I'm talking to Papa. Mm -hmm. Can I talk? Yes. He took that phone from that child's hand and put it up to his ear and heard his father say hello to him. Oh, wow. Wow. Because he just kind of took that thought out of his mind that it wasn't real and he embraced said, it. When I stopped crying to realize that my son said, hello, Jason, mm -hmm. it's dad. He said from that, he said, we canceled the appointment. He said, mm -hmm. now we encourage her after meeting you, we encourage her to go ahead and speak with him because he mm -hmm. has said things to her that she translates to us. Mm -hmm. And wow. it's given them closure that that dad's okay. Mm -hmm. He's gone, but he's on another plane and he's doing fine. Wow, that's that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Well, you know how they say, you know, years ago they would say out of the mouth of babes mm -hmm. comes the truth. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's exactly what happened. Wow. Wow. Do you think that um, having this ability um, has made you, and I guess maybe it's hard to say because you've never really not known about this ability, but do you think it's made you view like death in the afterlife different than the regular person would be less fearful maybe because you kind of have oh, more of a peaceful, yeah. Because yeah. what I endured through of Vietnam, I wasn't prepared for that. Right. Mm. I was only 17 years old, 17, 18 years old. I wasn't prepared for that, but I handled it like a trooper because I was guided to do so. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I was so busy, I didn't have time to question it. I just did what was being told to me, mm -hmm. and there was no fear involved. If anything, it was a reward because I got to see, got to see and help them cross over. Mm. Wow. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite quite an achievement, but I will tell you, I wouldn't trade it for love or money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so you definitely view it more as a gift than any sort of burden. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. There were times I've questioned, you know, why me? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Why do I have this? What am I supposed to do with this? And mm -hmm. every time I question that, something will come up that will make it all right. Mm -hmm. And that to me is my reward. Wow. Nice. So therefore, I decided that I was going to, at this age, start helping people. And uh, I've done my readings. I've done public. I've done uh, through my book, what have you. But the book right now is helping a lot of people. It's a one-man show, but it's for everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about writing, writing any other books? Maybe to, as I imagine oh, you I, couldn't I, possibly I, cover I, everything in that's one. That's so funny you said that. Yeah. I am starting my second book. Okay. Oh. Which will give a lot of answers. What I'm doing is I wanted the book out there first. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see how people would respond because it is something new. And then I waited to get the response of, of my readers mm -hmm. and there were so many questions mm -hmm. and they were so positive and it was of moving forward i want to know about this person what happened to margaret what happened to eric and this way it opened up their mind of the possibility that this is a real thing mm -hmm. wow and therefore these answers will come in the next book and it's also going to be teaching because there are lessons in the book. Everybody has told me, mm -hmm. I know how to accept death now. I know that it's nothing to be afraid of. So with this lesson that they've learned from there, I can continue in the second book and open their minds and hearts to a little bit more mm -hmm. of how to share my gift with everyone. That would be great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely lined up to buy that one then. <laughs> April's on the. I'm on, on board with that one. Yeah. But, well, yeah. you got to take baby steps. It's your, mm -hmm. you know, it's my first uh, endeavor to do something like this, and I was mm -hmm. scared to death. It took me three and a half years to write this, mm -hmm. with the encouragement on a daily basis, almost hounding, of Sunny. Mm -hmm. You've got, you've got this message. You've got to get it out there. Mm -hmm. You have 
got to get it out there. And I will tell you, when I was at her her side when she died, mm-hmm. and she came to me immediately mm-hmm. and said to me in my ear, "You're right. It is beautiful here." Wow! Wow! <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. Have you um seen her? Oh. Um... I, I, it, it, obviously, you, I know you don't really have a choice in what you see, but um, has she come to you since, or is it was she? Kind oh yes, of... yes, I can call. I actually on any any spirit that I, I have encountered, uh-huh. I can call on them. Oh really? Yes, right. I can call on them, and they will uh-huh. come forth, and I will get their. I will have their feeling of presence. I mm-hmm. don't see them. Okay. And it, it it becomes almost a mental communication, but. The enduring thing is I've never lost track of any of a person that I've read for, any mm-hmm. person that's crossed, any person that I've seen. Mm-hmm. And the fun thing is, is starting this new book, I have a room and it's filled with all these people. Everybody wants a chapter of their own. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have it's a more like, writing credit? How about me? Mm-hmm. How about me? You know? and it, it's, it's like, okay, everybody has to just leave the room mm-hmm. this is my time and they will they do have they do have the respect yeah. of when to and when not to visit wow right. is it is it always a peaceful encounter or do you ever get negative encounters with mm-hmm. with these spirits uh i do it's always peaceful mm-hmm. i have had warnings mm-hmm. i have had warnings for other people such as health issues what have you okay yeah. um I have saved many lives, many of my clients' lives, mm-hmm. because of the message that I get. Just touching them immediately, I will feel something and direct them to the doctors and what doctor to see. And mm-hmm. I have also worked with doctors under, di- uh, under diagnostic. Wow. wow. Yeah. I have a lady that uh, she's been with me for several years, and the moment I went to shampoo her hair, she leaned back and I said, when you're finished here, I know that you're head of a very large hospital, but you need to go get your thyroid checked. And she said, there's nothing wrong. I just passed my annual physical. And I mm-hmm. said, they didn't check your thyroid. So she went in and she had stage two cancer. Wow. Wow. She went that afternoon right back to work and they yeah. did a test on her and found out. And she's fine today. Uh-huh. Matter of fact, she's coming in tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she's a doctor. so <laughs> And she didn't even... Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, doctors make the worst patients, you know that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm sure. <laughs> they really do. <laughs> so had she probably known about your gifts beforehand, so she just, like, believed you right away? And uh, No, she was extreme. She's a journalist also, and she's mm-hmm. extremely a skeptic. Uh, mm-hmm. Very devout, very devout Catholic and did not believe in any, any of this. Mm-hmm. And then after I told her, uh, she became quite the believer. Oh yeah, I bet. Yeah. Matter of fact, she bought 15, when my book went in print, she bought fifteen copies and started a book club. <laughs> <laughs> she wanted to spread the word immediately. Yeah. You gotta believe this guy. Oh yeah. <laughs> so it's you know it's fun, it's enjoyable, mm-hmm. it's to me. Most of all, it's rewarding because if I can help another human being Mm -hmm. be at peace within themselves and learn how to enjoy life, knowing that a loved one has passed, that's Mm -hmm. not the end of our life. Mm -hmm. That was the end of their journey here, Mm -hmm. but they carried on to a new one. And to let them know that it's okay for you to rejoice that, wow, they don't have to pay taxes anymore. You know, I don't have to worry (laughs) about getting them birthday gifts. Mm-hmm. that type of scenario and you get them in that that frame of mind and it's amazing how people change and mm-hmm. they embrace it mm-hmm. so there's a little bit of education there for all of us yeah. definitely yeah. yeah absolutely well it sounds yeah like it's something that even even if going in you're skeptical or unsure about what this whole thing is it's definitely worth considering and reading the experience of someone like yourself so that you can kind of have a bigger picture of what the possibilities might be. Mm-hmm. That's absolutely true. Mm-hmm. If you walk around with a closed mind, that's what you're going to get is mm-hmm. a closed door. That makes a lot of sense yeah. for a lot of things in life. But yeah, absolutely. I know. I know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, it, it, and it's just so virtually true. Mm-hmm. But, you know, 
when in doubt, ask. Mm -hmm. Don't walk away. You know, I've had people come up to me. I I don't believe in this. I Mm -hmm. absolutely don't believe in this. Mm -hmm. And I actually had that happen yesterday with a group of friends where I was at. And the one gentleman was there and he says, well, I know my wife believes in it, but I don't believe in it. And Mm -hmm. I just said to him, all right without saying his, his name, I said, yeah. all right, if you don't believe in that, I said, can I just say one thing to you and have your permission to tell you this? Mm-hmm. And he said, yes. And I said, well, I said, you had a dog. You were 14 years old. I said, and that dog ran away from home. <laughs> I said, and it just destroyed you. Mm-hmm. And I said, and two years later, you were over at a new friend's house and who was at that house was your dog that they found but they didn't know who you were Mm -hmm. oh wow and he just looked at his wife and Mm -hmm. he looked at my two friends and that man literally dropped his beer on the deck (laughs) and he says i've never been told my wife about that Uh i didn't even think about that he says there's no way someone could have told you that because anybody that knew about that they're all gone now Mm -hmm. and i said well there you go (laughs) <laughs> and it's and it's always kind of detailed like that. It's always a, a cons- like a detailed experience or oh yeah it, it, yes yes mm-hmm. when it comes through I can't give you you know uh, bits and pieces if I don't give you the whole picture mm-hmm. you'll never understand what I'm trying to or the message I'm trying to convey. Mm-hmm. Wow. I mean, I even told the name of the dog. Mm-hmm. I told him the the description of the dog. And he just could not believe that. Wow. He yeah. He just could not believe it. Faced with that, yeah, mm-hmm. it's pretty hard not to start believing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the wonderful thing. And like I said, it can be fun. Mm-hmm. It can be fun and it can't be arduous because there are days I would just like to have to be able to turn it off. Mm-hmm. But if it's a strong enough message and I've turned everything off, trying to be, you know, into myself, if you will, Mm. if it's something that's strong enough and and prevalent that I need to get this message out, this spirit will not let me, they'll be knocking on my door (laughs) and man, I've got something to tell you. I've got something and I'll listen to it. Mm -hmm. And then I just let it go. I accept it and I let it go because I know within a day or so it will come true. Mm -hmm. And it does. It does. It's inevitable. I've never had a message that I've not been able to deliver. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, and it is, oh. it is a given, it is a given gift. Mm-hmm. Hence mm-hmm. the name, you know. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, oh, I, sorry. I have to ask, how did you find um, Breaking Rules Publishing? How did you get in touch with them? Uh, I knew the two of them. I met them at a party. Mm-hmm. And I, I was aware that he wrote. I had no idea that he was a publisher. And I've been trying to get my book out there. Mm-hmm. And one day we were just conversing. And he started telling me, I said, so you're a writer? And he said, yes. And he says, and I've just taken on the job of doing my own publishing. And I said, well, I was having a hard time with it. And he said, well, let me just read it. Mm-hmm. Well, I gave it to him. He said he got into the first two paragraphs and called me and said, I'm taking this book on. <laughs> Not even first page, so first two paragraphs. Everything works, mm-hmm. happens, you know, for a path of reason. Mm-hmm. And I ended up doing a reading for him, and uh, it was it was pretty heartfelt. And he definitely, definitely is one of my biggest fans. Mm-hmm. He will stand there and watch me do a reading for somebody, and he's, in absolute awe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ask him about his dog. <laughs> his dog. <laughs> <laughs> I was in his house and I was telling him about his, his little poodle and oh my God, he just went into tears. Oh. Tell him what it looked like and him where it was in the house and the dog jumped from underneath the TV stand, came over and jumped over this table and right on the sofa and he felt that dog's presence. Wow. wow. Yeah. That's fun. So it's, yeah, he was pretty much a wreck that day. Oh. <laughs> I can imagine like, it be. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's also comforting though that our our animals are also there. Where I've met a couple people. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've met a couple people who say 
who believe that animals have no souls and whatnot. And, I mean, you don't have to be a psychic or a medium to see that, you know, animals have personalities. But it, I think it's also comforting to know that our pets are with us also. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, you look at these these animals that are used with with kids that have epilepsy and what have you. Mm -hmm. That's a soul. Yeah. If Mm -hmm. that dog didn't feel that other person, how could it encourage you and tell you, hey, your son's having it or your daughter's about to have a seizure? Mm -hmm. Everything that breathes has a soul. Mm -hmm. It has to. It it has to. How would it exist? Mm Mm-hmm. How would it exist of knowing how to love somebody, how to feel, and how to share, and how to bring joy to somebody? Mm-hmm. If you didn't have a soul, you would have nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know that gets pretty heavy, but it's the truth. Yeah. <laughs> We're kind of just absorbing everything I know that when, you're yeah. saying. When Sunny, when Sunny passed on, Sunny had written several books. She used to write sitcoms, TV sitcoms, mm-hmm. years ago. And uh, she wrote a book about this dog of hers. Well, it was just amazing because when Sonny was ready to die, there were there was a cat and there were three of her dogs at her bedside. Wow. And I named each one of these dogs, and her sister or her her daughter and son just fell apart. How did you know that? Mm-hmm. I said because they're right here. They're right next to her. They're helping her. They want to cross her over their bridge, which is the rainbow bridge, if you will, Mm. to show her the reward that she had of loving them and selecting it was time for them to go rather than suffer. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to walk her through their area, if you will, of all these wonderful animals that have been loved and shared and then bring her over to her station, if you will, and it happened to be one of her best friends who had passed on that lived in California that was there to meet her. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty cool. That's was pretty cool. And I'm describing this to her, her uh, brother. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's Jewish, and they believe in stuff like this, you know, mm-hmm. because I'm considered a mystic in their religion. Mm-hmm. And uh, after I told him, he was doing a eulogy at her funeral, and Sonny was standing right next to him. Wow. And he felt her. Huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was pretty cool. That is amazing. Yeah, I'm kind mm-hmm. of lost for yeah, words. I know. <laughs> Now you've got me encouraged because I've been walking around the house with the phone in my hand Mm -hmm. and I'm picking all this up with the people that I spoke to and it's encouraged me today because I was going to to write, Mm -hmm. but now I'm getting other people in Mm. that don't forget to say this about me. (laughs) Bring me back into the book and I just think it's hysterical. Yeah, everyone wants their airtime. Because (laughs) Sunny's telling me that she wants another chapter of her. Uh Yeah, you're going to have a bunch of books, just everyone's... <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You'll be set. You'll have a whole oh, a right. whole series. <laughs> well, that's what I was told. I said, and someone had said, well, is this a series? And I said, I don't know if mm-hmm. you would consider it a series. It's a continuation, but I just don't know how to define the next book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I do it's... have the name of it, and mm-hmm. I'm going with that, so... Uh, That'll be encouraging. Mm-hmm. Do you so, want to... and I'm, no, I'm not telling the name. I, was say, I can see <laughs> April wanting to ask, but she wasn't was sure if she were going to tell. <laughs> it was like, okay, I, I just saw that big question mark in front of your head, you know, like, mm-hmm. oh, she's going to want to know what the name is. I want to keep it a secret, though. That's all right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. When it comes out, it, it'll be out. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I'm very proud of what I'm doing, and I, I'm proud that... I was open-minded enough to listen to somebody else help to guide me to do this, and that mm-hmm. was Sunny. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't trade that for love nor money. Yeah. Did, um, I guess my mom is sitting across from me. Do you have a question, Mom? Um, yes. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Hello. Um, I don't. Hi, mom. It, 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 <laughs> it's a pleasure to hear your voice. I can understand. Um, I, when I read the book, 
um, I'll be able to hear your voice. And so that Annie can read your copy, mm-hmm. I'm going to go down to our bookstore here in Albion and ask them to order it. Mm-hmm. But after reading it, well, I have a better understanding of what a spirit is. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's so funny that you had asked this question because I was asked the very same thing on Friday night by a woman that just read the book and she said I was such in such question knowing what you do but after I read the book she said the only question I have is how can I achieve this Uh, mm -hmm. and that's what my lesson is going to be on how to open your mind to ask for something Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm very, I'm very, very forceful with this because if you notice, a lot of people say, "Pray for me, pray for me that oh my God, I get the, I get the job or I can get this car." Mm-hmm. My belief is, and I've always been taught, don't ask for something that you can achieve within yourself. Mm-hmm. Just ask for the knowledge to help you to be able to achieve. Nothing is a gift. Mm-hmm. Nothing is going to be handed to you. Just ask. For the knowledge to be able to achieve these and that's your reward mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's like wow i did that mm-hmm. the knowledge of like how what steps to take and how to achieve something i did yeah that was yes. a great message all kind of all throughout the book where um it was neat just to read over and over again that you ask for things you don't ask when you're praying to god or asking god for anything or a higher power don't ask for things that you want, like a car or something. You ask for things that you need. What do you need? You need protection. You need health, you know, exactly. mm-hmm. happiness and stuff. So that's a, a great message in itself. Just don't be like, don't be so tied to the material mm-hmm. world and think more like broadly and whatnot. Just by you saying that, I can tell that that moved you mm-hmm. and it made you more aware. It did definitely, yeah, because I think... I was, yeah, I was reading this, and I was walking around at work and uh, thinking about it a lot, and Mm -hmm. it, like, gave me a little bit moment Mm -hmm. for myself to kind of open up and just think about my protectors and whatnot. You got Mm -hmm. that aha moment. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Hmm. See, that's what I'm trying to achieve. That's Mm -hmm. what you just said is exactly what I'm trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. You took time, you went into yourself, Mm -hmm. and you realized the ability that you have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All you. You keep saying you're trying to achieve it. I think you've achieved it. (laughs) With all the people that you've... Thank you. With everyone that you've said has... Well, there are those that are pretty tough. It's pretty tough to crack, you know, but... uh, Yes, I I am because this this book is so different than any other medium that mm-hmm. has written. I mm-hmm. did not learn anything out of a book, mm-hmm. and I do not you know do not put down anybody that has a gift and they've got their shows, what have you. But to me, it becomes so commercial that mm-hmm. you forget where the message is. Mm-hmm. Everybody's just in for the story and not for the message. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And I'm trying to keep that message alive and passing. Mm-hmm. Mom, did you have something else to say? Oh, so many questions about. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I actually, Mom, you've got so many questions. It's unbelievable. You haven't even read the book, but you've got so many questions. <laughs> but I will tell you, you do have a lot of people around you that have passed, and you have two people that are your spirit guides, and they watch over you constantly. I bet one of them. Well, um, I've, that's a good question I had. Do you have any uh, messages for either April or Annie? <laughs> I I feel that I, for myself, I kind of want to know who they are, but I want to guess also. <laughs> I do feel a lot of people that I know I'm, I'm loved by people on the other side, and mm-hmm. I, I'm looking forward to seeing them again someday. Oh, so. you definitely will. And the thing is, is they see you every day. And the most important thing is if you keep your heart and your mind open, you will feel them. If you're sitting there watching TV, cooking, whatever, I don't care what it is, and you feel as though you saw something go past you, turn around and recognize it. If you get a feeling of, wow, that might be, address that person. 
and you will feel them. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. That's all they're doing is they're walking around relentlessly, wanting attention, vying to get your communication. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. <laughs> are our spirit guides trying to help us in some way? They you call them, you call them a guide. You have a spirit guide. Are they trying to oh, point us in certain directions? You have decision makers that when you think about something, that you're in absolute mm -hmm. dire need of help to make a decision. Mm -hmm. There's a little voice that tells you, and you're going to say, oh, that's my subconscious. That's not your subconscious. That's your spirit guide talking to you. I need to listen to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. Because <laughs> I do know you're a very, very inquisitive individual, and you've probably got a list of, of since we've been speaking, you've probably got a list of a thousand questions now. <laughs> that this, this is... This has opened up a new door for you. And it's not that you've not questioned it because you do believe. It's just that now you've made a contact of someone who can give answers. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, a lot of those answers are held within yourself. It's just opening your, your heart and your mind a little bit more to receive the messages that come to you. Because mm -hmm. you have a female that, that is your decision maker. She's standing on your left-hand side, and it's someone who is very dear to you that passed. It's an older female, and she is the one that is giving you direction. I'm wow. feeling like a great-grandmother, and you don't even have to know if you've known this person. But it's a female on your left-hand side that, that's giving you direction. I, I'm putting on my arm, and I'm trying to hug her, because I, I doubt she's very tall. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Oh. You know, I, just the embracement that mm -hmm. you had said that you try to hug her, mm -hmm. you open up your heart and you'll feel her hug you back. Mm -hmm. You've got both. <laughs> it's pretty profound. It's a, great, it's, it's a great feeling. It's like, okay, I just got goosebumps. Yeah. You know, the hair in the back of my neck stood up. And, you know, it's not because there's a spider on you. It's because there's someone around you that's mm -hmm. trying to let you know the love that they have. I appreciate the fact that you're a veteran and that you have a message for the other men that have been through what you've been in and I would recommend this to any soldier either that from the Vietnam era or or current mm -hmm. that's, that's struggling with things that they saw. So I, I thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank uh -huh. you. Thank you. Thank you. You're more than welcome. It's my pleasure. I will tell you um, last week I had an Uber driver driving me home. He was a young gentleman, and I asked him if he believed in spirits, and he said, yeah, somewhat. And I said, well, I need to tell you something about myself. So I told him, and all of a sudden I said, you have lost several people. I said, you were in Desert Storm, and the kid just pulled off on the side of the road, put the car in park, and he said, sir, how did you know that? And I said, because you have two of your buddies that are right here. And I said, and you need closure with them. Wow. <laughs> so I told him who they were, told him what they looked like, told him where they were at at the time of their demise and what his feeling was. And I said, you've been holding this in because you don't want to talk to anybody because you feel that it's failure, that you came home and they didn't. Mm -hmm. I said, they went, they went home before you did. Well, yeah, they that's true. Yeah. Sure that they're just making sure that you are all right. Mm -hmm. well, well, Monday, I get a phone call, and it's from this woman. I'm flying in from Ohio. I, you don't know who I am. I will not tell you who I am until after the reading. I met her, did a reading, mm -hmm. and I looked at her, and I said, you don't have to tell me who sent you. I said, it's your son. Mm -hmm. He told you what I told him about his friends in Desert Storm. And she said, how did you know that? I said, because those boys are here to guide what I was telling you. Wow. Huh. Yeah. That is so amazing, sometimes yeah. there's never a dry eye in the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you got me and mom going but for there, sure. There mm -hmm. is a feeling of relief. Mm -hmm. And the, the woman had said to me, as a matter of fact, I got a text message from her yesterday. She says, I decided to, to move down here to be with my son, my grandchild, mm -hmm. and my 
my daughter-in-law, she said, I have never felt so at peace within myself of making decisions as I have since I've met you. Wow. Yeah. So you don't question yourself as much or you have more mm -hmm. faith in your decisions. If you, yeah. Yeah. That because you sense. know already what's going to happen now. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have this fear. You don't have to say, Oh my God, what happens if I die tomorrow? Who's going to carry on? Mm -hmm. You're still going to carry on. You're just on the other side, watching and helping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, <laughs> we've Sorry, been talking all soaking for almost it in. an hour. Yeah, we've been <laughs> a lot of the... <laughs> such a good interview. Such a good talk. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I think, uh, so the book is The Given Hand, A Messenger's Journey. Um, if people are interested in getting it, other than like their local bookstores, where else would they might be able to find this? They can get them through Amazon. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, and, I... and I'm, I'm trying to look to see if I can get this for audio because I want those who are impaired to be able to mm -hmm. hear my voice also. Ooh, that would yeah. be amazing. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. All right. Well, th thank you for joining us. I didn't plan on this going so long, but you're just an amazing person just to talk to. Well, thank you very much. And it, it's absolutely my pleasure. Mm hmm and tell your mother to get that book because there's a story in there for her. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> she's excited. <laughs> yep, yep. She's, she's, she's going to go around hugging everyone after this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> she probably is. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so well, much. Again, I thank you very much. It's been an honor to be able to do this and, mm -hmm. and to be able to enhance some type of credibility of what we don't know. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Otto. Sorry, you are very welcome. My nephew is pouting. Sorry. <laughs> John, do you have a question? <laughs> yes. Okay, what's your question for Otto? <laughs> One last question. <laughs> well, okay. you're talking about um, how people can get it, get the uh, gift. Um, how do you... Well, the gift is already there. So what you have to do is if you can learn how to meditate or go into a room and go within yourself and think nothing but good things and think of things that you would like to do for other people. It's all about giving. And if you feel that you can achieve that by making yourself a better person, it's going to expand to the next person and then to the next person. It's just as easy as a smile every day. Mm -hmm. Just one smile can go on forever. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Something to Look think about. Look at all the smiles in that room. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> all right. Well, again, thank you so mm -hmm. much. This has been such a pleasure. I, thank, I, you. I, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. We will meet. <laughs> We will meet. Yes, All I right. look forward to your next yep. book. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Keep posted. <laughs> I'd love that. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> Well, that was uh, a lot of a lot of yeah. uh, that was intense for 10 a.m. <laughs> on a Monday morning, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, which is when we're recording this. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, The Given Hand by Otto Throw and Sunny Fader. Oh, yeah. Yep. T-H-R-O-W. And he said you can get it on Amazon. Mm hmm. So. But and... yeah, lots of good messages. Mm hmm. And it, yeah, just is, I mean, just with yourself, too, just kind of. Mm hmm. I found myself doing little things that he said mm -hmm. just doing just well, like it, it definitely seems like even if you're not the kind of person that I don't want to say buys into this, but you know, the kind of person that's in hook, line and sinker for the kind of concept that mm -hmm. he's talking about, that the idea of spreading positivity and being open is yeah. a universal thing that I think all of us can kind of join in, on. join in on and learn more about. And and then what happens when you're more open is something that, you know, mm -hmm. well, you know, come upon you and you can deal with it at that point. But so I think it's a positive message for everybody. Definitely. Yeah. Even if you're not a full believer of, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, if this talk is anything, I feel like just talk, just contact him and talk to him. Right. <laughs> He'll make you a believer. <laughs> even if, yeah. even if he doesn't do a reading for you yeah. or not just talking to him. Mm-hmm. 
as mom looks over her shoulder at her guardian angel. Mm. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Wow. That was... I have to take some time to bounce back, April. Yeah, I know. Both <laughs> mom and I are teary. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> keep Kleenex in the middle of the table from now on. I know, on, that's what I need case. to do. I have a runny nose anyway, usually, when I talk. Oh, yeah, we can hear. I try. <laughs> <laughs> Also keep a paper towel in case you bring drinks too. Yeah, that's for you, Anna. Oh yeah, I'm leaving a ring on your table. Sorry, you don't have coasters. <laughs> I don't have coasters today. Where's my coasters? <laughs> and I would put it on, but I gave you my clean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, well, I guess thank you to yes, our thanks impromptu... for being our audience. Thanks for the questions, Linda. Obligatory audience, but <laughs> even if it, it was the kind of interview that opened up a million more questions, yeah, and... <laughs> just makes you want but... to question and keep yeah he's, he's he seems very open to so i'm sure if you read mm-hmm. the book and jot down i'm sure he'll be more than happy to follow up yeah it's something yeah it sounds like he just kind of mm-hmm. i mean he's yeah it was great just easy to talk easy to talk to mm-hmm. yeah so and a great voice if you if you listen to this auto mm-hmm. <laughs> do do your auto do your uh audio he should book. call it his auto book Mm. his audio or something if there's a pun in there somewhere is what i'm saying you could just audio 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 his audio audio (laughs) i don't know yeah yeah i mean because like some authors like have other people read read, but like he'd be a (laughs) he'd be a good person just to hear his voice Mm -hmm. yeah he's a very nice speaking voice i should have said that to you Otto, but Mm -hmm. hopefully that message is being transmitted to you mm-hmm. oh yeah he knows <laughs> he knows he saw that question above my head <laughs> i was always thinking that I'm like is he spying on us <laughs> yeah <it's... laughs> just getting a mental picture of us but that still very cool mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. What? hush audience member <laughs> <laughs> it's not an interactive show <laughs> it's not right? interactive. <laughs> but okay okay well we can she only puts up with noise from cats, not from yes. other people. <laughs> it's true. I have more patience for animals than I do people. <laughs> That's not a surprise, though. Yeah. Okay, well, crazy 10 a.m. Uh-huh. But... It's intense. But when they're listening to this, oh, it'll be later. It'll in the be day, later. Sure. It'll be Ho- 4 a.m. <laughs> hopefully the evening after a long day so they can, yeah. they can cry with, you know, after dinner. <laughs> Whatever. Yep. They can be moved to tears. Mm-hmm. But... Until next time. Danke. Danke. Don't feel like saying bitches because this is such a good like episode. You just ruined it I'll now. cut it out. You sullied it with your curse words, I'll April. I'll cut it out. Danke. I'm personally offended. <laughs>